China just built a ship elevator that lifts 3,000-ton vessels straight up through a mountain. And when American engineers saw the specs, they said it was impossible. You're about to watch how Chinese engineers moved floating ships vertically through solid rock using a system so precise it can't tilt more than 2 inches while climbing 370 feet. This is the Three Gorges Ship Elevator, the largest vertical ship lift ever constructed and the engineering behind it rewrites what's possible in modern construction. But before we see how this massive elevator works, you need to understand the problem that made building it necessary in the first place. Picture this. You're standing on the Yangtze River, watching cargo ships move upstream. And suddenly the river just stops. Not slows down, not narrows, but hits a wall of concrete, 370 feet tall stretching nearly a mile and a half across the valley. The Three Gorges Dam turned a flowing river into a vertical cliff, and every ship trying to move cargo up or down this waterway now faces an impossible obstacle. Ships can't sail uphill. They need water beneath them to float, and when that water level changes by 370 feet, you've got a problem that stumped engineers for decades. The old solution was traditional lock systems, those stepped chambers that lift ships gradually over hours. But here's where it gets brutal. Those locks take three to four hours per ship. And when you're moving thousands of vessels through this bottleneck every month, that delay compounds into chaos. But China didn't build the world's largest dam just to strangle their own shipping routes. They needed a solution that could move 3,000 ton ships up a mountain in minutes, not hours, without spilling a drop of water or tilting the vessel even slightly. And that's when Chinese engineers proposed something that sounded like science fiction. A giant elevator that would carry ships vertically through the mountain itself. The concept sounds insane. You're going to float a ship into a massive steel box, fill it with water, and then lift the entire thing straight up through a mountain. But that's exactly what Chinese engineers designed. And the scale of this floating chamber is where things get shocking. The chamber itself is 393 feet long, 59 feet wide, and 16 feet deep. It's essentially a skyscraper laid on its side, hollowed out and turned into a water tank. When a ship floats inside and the gates seal shut, you're looking at 15,500 tons of water plus 3,000 tons of ship, all sitting in a steel container that weighs 11,800 tons empty. You're moving the equivalent weight of 9,000 cars straight up. But here's the tension. That entire mass has to rise 370 feet without tilting even two inches off level. If the chamber tips during ascent, the ship inside slides, the water sloshes, and you've got a cascading disaster that could tear the whole system apart. So how do you keep something that heavy perfectly stable while dragging it up the face of a mountain? The answer is 256 steel cables, each one capable of holding the entire weight alone. That's not just redundancy. That's engineering paranoia taken to an extreme, because if even one cable snaps, the other 255 keep lifting like nothing happened. These ropes connect to a counterweight system that balances the load, so the electric motors aren't fighting gravity, they're just guiding a balance system up and down. Then came the real engineering nightmare, keeping the chamber level during the climb. You're lifting 15,000 tons of water and steel 370 feet into the air. And if that chamber tilts more than two inches at any point during the climb, the entire system fails. Two inches. Over a distance equal to a 37-story building. That's a tolerance so tight it makes building a skyscraper look forgiving. Here's where the tension gets brutal. Water doesn't stay still. As the chamber rises, any slight imbalance creates movement inside. The ship shifts a few inches to one side, the water responds, and suddenly you've got weight distribution changing in real time. If the chamber tips even slightly, the water rushes to the low side, which makes the tilt worse, which makes more water rush. And you're watching a 3,000-ton ship slide into a steel wall while riding up a mountain. Chinese engineers solved this with a hydraulic system that makes thousands of micro-adjustments during every lift. Sensors monitor the chamber's tilt in real time, measuring angles down to fractions of a degree. The moment the system detects even the slightest lean, hydraulic actuators push against the chamber from different points, counteracting the tilt before it compounds. 
It's not just lifting the chamber, it's actively fighting to keep it level every second of the 40-minute climb. But building a system that can do this meant carving through the mountain itself, and that's where the construction turned into an 18-year nightmare. You can't just bolt a ship elevator onto the side of a mountain. You have to cut through millions of tons of solid rock and create two perfectly vertical shafts over 400 feet tall, and those shafts need to be so straight that a steel chamber can slide up and down them without ever touching the walls. The excavation began with drilling and blasting. Engineers had to remove entire sections of mountainside, carving twin channels that would guide the elevator chamber from river level to the top of the dam. But here's the nightmare. You're not just digging a hole, you're creating precision slots in living rock. The mountain shifts, earthquakes happen, temperature changes cause the rock to expand and contract. Any deviation in those shafts, any bulge or lean in the walls, and the 11,000-ton chamber jams halfway up with a ship trapped inside. Chinese engineers spent years surveying the rock, mapping fault lines, measuring stress points. They blasted carefully, removing rock in controlled sections to avoid fracturing the surrounding stone. Every few feet of progress required new measurements to verify the shaft remained vertical. And as they went deeper, the pressure increased. You're cutting into a mountain that's supporting a dam holding back billions of gallons of water. One miscalculation and the whole excavation could collapse, but removing the rock was only half the battle. Now they had to build the towers that would guide the chamber, and those structures needed to be perfectly parallel to each other while rising over 400 feet through unstable ground. You've carved two massive shafts through the mountain and now you need to build concrete towers inside them that will guide an 11,000-ton chamber up and down without ever letting it touch the sides. And here's the killer. Those towers need to stay perfectly vertical and parallel for decades. While the mountain settles, earthquakes strike, and temperature swings cause the concrete to expand and contract. Chinese engineers poured reinforced concrete into those carved shafts, building twin guide towers that rise over 400 feet. But the tension here is unforgiving. If one tower leans even slightly toward the other, the chamber wedges between them. If they lean apart, the chamber loses guidance and can swing during ascent. These towers needed to be installed with tolerances measured in millimeters across a structure taller than a 30-story building. The construction crews worked from bottom to top, pouring concrete in sections and letting each level cure before adding the next. Between the towers, they installed guide rails precision machined steel tracks that the chamber would ride along. Every rail segment had to align perfectly with the one below it and the one above it. A single misaligned section would create a bump that could jam the system, or worse, destabilize the chamber mid-climb when it's loaded with thousands of tons of water and ship. Then came the challenge that pushed engineering teams to their limits. Threading 256 steel cables through this tower system and connecting them to a chamber that hadn't even been built yet. You're standing at the base of these towers, looking up at 400 feet of vertical shaft. And you need to thread 256 individual steel cables from top to bottom. Attach them to an 11,000 ton steel chamber. Connect each one to counterweights and tension them so perfectly that they all share the load equally. Miss the tension on even one cable and it either goes slack making the other cables carry extra weight, or pulls too tight and creates an imbalance that tilts the entire chamber. Each cable had to be routed from the chamber, up through the towers, over massive pulleys at the top, and down to counterweight systems. Engineers worked cable by cable, measuring tension with precision instruments, adjusting and readjusting until all 256 ropes pulled with equal force. This wasn't just installation. It was calibration, at a scale never attempted before. One cable out of sync, and the whole system fails when loaded. But the real test came when they built the chamber itself, welding an 11,000-ton steel container that needs to be watertight under pressure, perfectly balanced for weight distribution, and equipped with attachment points for 256 cables. The welding alone took months. Every seam had to be flawless, because once this chamber fills with 15,000 tons of water, any leak could compromise the hydraulic systems or shift the weight unexpectedly. Then came years of testing, empty chamber lifts, partial water loads, measuring tilt at every stage of ascent. 
verifying the hydraulic correction systems could respond fast enough, adding weight gradually until they reached full capacity. Every test revealed new adjustments needed in the cable tension, the hydraulic response time, the sensor calibration. And then, in 2016, 18 years after construction began, a 3,000-ton cargo ship floated into the chamber at the base of the mountain. The gates sealed. Water filled the space around the hull. The cables tensed. And for 40 minutes, you watched a ship rise vertically through solid rock, climbing 370 feet while staying so level that the crew inside barely felt the movement. The hydraulic systems fired constantly, making thousands of tiny corrections. The sensors tracked every fraction of a degree of tilt. The 256 cables held without a single failure. When the upper gates opened and that ship floated out at the top of the dam, Chinese engineers had done something American experts said was impossible. They moved ocean-class vessels over a mountain using an elevator system operating at tolerances tighter than most precision machinery. And they did it with a structure that weighs more than a naval destroyer. This isn't just the world's largest ship elevator. It's a vertical shipping lane carved through a mountain that moves millions of tons of cargo every year, and it works flawlessly every single time those gates close. 